there's been a lot of change that has occurred over the years, and I've seen a lot of growth and development, both in terms of in terms of tempo, in terms of the way that we work here, but also I think in terms of you know what it means to be a part of the university and its evolving, growing nature. You know, both in both in, in terms of structures, but also in terms of how we work as a community. Um, you know, there's been some. Some great times, some good times, and some challenging times, you know, yeah. over the years. But but yeah. overall, wonderful. In Spanish, we say we're Cuban. We say you can't um, cover the sun with your thumb, you know. You can't, don't try to do it because you yeah. can't do it. Yeah. And so that's kind of like, ah, I don't want to look or think about that stuff. But you have to. The world, as you were saying before we actually started taping, the world will be increasingly diverse, yeah. you know, and mixed and mingled. And so we have to look at these things if we're going to be intelligent, you know, agents in the world. exciting possibility of coming to work at, a, at an institution of higher education where we were then really working with folks already thinking these issues through more more deeply and and certainly it's a, it's a it's a place that I was already very familiar that there was a lot of engagement going on mm. and I was aware of for example the history of the Church of the Brethren and I knew that these folks were about social justice I knew that they were you know about peace and I knew that they were also advocates, you know, across the board. And so, so for me, the idea of coming to work at the University of Vernon was a very enticing opportunity to work at a higher ed institution, but also an institution that I knew also complemented the uh, social justice pursuit that we had at NCCJ. From the beginning, the University of Laverne has been a welcoming community. Making its home in the orange groves of Southern California, it was surrounded by different cultures making their lives wherever there was work. Diverse would not be a way to describe the Lordsburg College, but even in its early years, the college housed names like Vejar, Soto, and Palomares. The dynamics from then to now are very different. Labeled a Hispanic serving institution, the University of Laverne's demographic has greatly changed. Mm -hmm. We are this very diverse university in terms of our students, 60% students of color, 50% Pell eligible, almost 50% first generation, first in their families to go to college. That's, that's a lot of diversity and so we know we got to pay attention, we have to enrich ourselves, understand this better. One of the However, before Laverne began to think about ways of bringing diversity, the students made the first move. In 1993, following the Rodney King trial, universities around the nation began to feel the student unrest. Close to home was Pomona College, where students took over a building in order to get the attention of administration regarding their desire for more diversity in the faculty. On a similar note, the students of the University of Laverne took over a spring ceremony in order to express their frustration over the lack of diversity in the faculty. The students asked for immediate action in filling openings with minority professors. The Laverne administration answered the students' demand by bringing students into the search committee for the new faculty and agreeing to conduct studies into why the number of black graduates, especially male, was dropping. And I think what the key is, in many ways, is the diversification of the faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because when you have people with, who are themselves diverse, mm -hmm. uh, you think in terms of the needs of everyone. And things are very different today. Mm -hmm. And they're different because of personnel. Yeah. You know, the mm -hmm. same physical plan in many ways, or those, uh, mm -hmm. but a very different kind of, of mm -hmm. atmosphere. Um, and I was at a conference once where someone asked, how do you diversify the faculty? And the facilitator said, one retirement at a time. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, that the faculty, it will be a slower process because of tenure. Um, administrators and staff don't have tenure, so they'll turn around more often and, you know, we can make the whatever are the appropriate changes at the time. I think... Um, some of the important things that we talk about during the um, faculty search committee training is sort of debunking some of the myths, or I wouldn't even say myths, some of the things that people throw their hands up and say, oh, 
the problem's too big. We can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. So, for example, people might say, well, there are fewer diverse graduates of PhD programs. So, you know, hey, it's it's a it's a slim little pool, and you know, we can't get them, and and that and we just don't pay enough, and that kind of stuff. And um, first of all, I would say in terms of pay, we're using um, Coupa, so a standard. Um, scale, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, in higher education. So, um, and, the, and the university is also uh, using a regional multiplier in terms of, yeah, it costs more to live in Southern California, so they're, they're going to put that in too. So whatever that index is, that, that will also be added. Yeah. So I think the salary part, I think we're doing well there. We're, we're, we're getting to a good place where we are competitive, so yeah, yeah. very competitive, so I, I think that's good. Um, uh, some of the other stuff to look at, though, is, yeah, it's true, maybe there aren't as many graduates, but where are we? Are we in, um, in Des Moines, Iowa? No. no. <laughs> uh, so so are, are we in Idaho? No. And so in terms of um, historically underrepresented folks, we're in Southern California. That's an attractive place. So yes. whereas it might be harder in some institutions to attract diverse candidates, I think for us it would be easier. Um, I also think that our mission and our students would be attractive to diverse candidates. You know, often you want to give back in a way that you've been helped. Yes. And so many diverse folks with, you know, doctorates and PhDs, they want to do the same for other people, you know. Um, uh, reach as we climb, you know, is what they say. So you're making your way up, you're reaching back and helping other people come up. So yeah. I think we have a couple of advantages that um, help us get past the fact that maybe there aren't as many candidates. Yes, in terms of structures of support for groups of students and or even of faculty, because I think that was equally as, as important in fact, the structures of, of support for faculty, I think, give um, give more support eventually to the students. If they see those things sort of like faculty engaging in issues of, 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 of you know considerable concern and and and, um, and just just um, dialogue amongst themselves, it, it readily reflects that oh you know what it, it, it's not bad that that we that we do this as students you know in fact you know obviously they mirror a lot of times what they see and and or it's approval you know it's approval that uh, just by by seeing something being done it's tacit approval like oh okay so this is not probably not it's not bad it's a, probably a good thing but it's permission also to mm -hmm. kind of engage and, and, and move forward a little bit but also, you know, ultimately what we do want is we want them to not only be supported in terms of their own identity, but we want them to feel comfortable and, and competent in learning about each other mm -hmm. and working with each other and collaborating with each other. Uh, but really to be friends, honestly, in the end with each other because ultimately, you know, you have to get to know folks in order to really, you know, allow yourselves to be who you are with each other. You know, again, as you know, there's been so much um, violence uh, of late in terms of um, African Americans and, and other people of color and um, and uh, you know we're not present for every story but clearly some of the video we see these are uh, truly people who are um, wrongly um, hurt uh, killed wounded and so I think now it's it's once again become and um, it come to the forefront where people right. are saying, my goodness, we can't go on like this as a right. society. How do we come back together? Because this Your is for Your sister, Your sister. Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Ruben Briston, Jermaine Reed. How many more black bodies? Black lives matter. When I say black lives, you say matter. Black lives matter. matter. Undersigned joined the Faculty Diversity Committee and call upon President Lieberman and the University Administration to stand with other colleges and universities and make our campus a sanctuary for DACA and undocumented immigrants, their families, and related community members who may soon be facing deportation. The President-elect's promise to deport undocumented immigrants and rescind President Obama's DACA program 
on day one of his presidency will directly affect the undocumented students we serve. With this statement, we join with voices now rising spontaneously across the country, alarmed by documented acts of violence occurring coast to coast, directed towards people of color, women, LGBTQ individuals, and immigrants. Reports from within our Laverne community of racist verbal assaults started almost immediately after the election, although too early to tell how pervasive these behaviors are now or will become within our community. We believe now is the time to act decisively to signal that such conduct will be met with zero tolerance. The antagonism we are seeing directed towards immigrants in particular is nothing new in the history of California, but never before has this hostility been given such legitimacy from the highest office in the nation. In response, the call to take up the sanctuary movement of the mid-1980s is quickly building momentum. Laverne's brethren legacy of peace and nonviolence closely align with the moral urgency of the sanctuary movement. In that spirit, we call upon you to act too. Continue to hold closed door meetings with students, staff, administration, and faculty to hear firsthand the fears and traumas they are experiencing at this time and support their resilience to endure, resist, and defend themselves. Immediately declare the entire university campus, including its regional entities, sanctuary for undocumented DACA immigrants, their families, and related community members. Immediately declare the entire community campus, including its regional entities, safe spaces for people now threatened by rising violence and aggression, including our people of color, women, LGBTQ individuals, religious minorities, and other marginalized groups now facing vivid threats of terror against them. Guarantee student privacy by refusing to release information regarding immigration status of our students and community members and refuse to comply with immigration authorities regarding deportation or raids. Publicly declare our university support for and protection of undocumented DACA immigrants, their families, and related community members. Network with other universities here in California and elsewhere as possible to amplify the message of sanctuary and solidarity across our nation. Requisition resources necessary for the establishment of an undocumented student resource center, provisioned with full-time staff and office space to assist DACA students and other students who lack the privilege of citizenship on a strictly confidential basis. Assure that all students will receive a campus and community experience free of hostilities, aggressions, and bullying by publicizing the campus-wide reporting mechanism and training all staff and faculty in de-escalation intervention techniques. President Lieberman, you have been an ardent champion of Laverne's mission to value diversity and inclusivity. That value is under direct attack from the highest office of the nation, an attack that cannot be countenanced if we are to sustain the integrity against which we measure ourselves and for which you have devoted substantial energy to consolidate and exalt. A national crisis of identity is quickly gathering before us. Only your office has the authority to signal our entire community we will not waver in this time of challenge and crisis. We thank you for your unwavering commitment and service to our institutional mission and values, and ask you to join us in shared witness to Elie Lazelle's testament, no human being is illegal. Signed, Paul Alvarez, Professor of Kinesiology, Ingrid Bartman, Associate Professor of Education, Heidi Contreras, Assistant Professor of Biology, Kathy Duncan, Associate Professor of Management, Benjamin Jenkins, Associate Professor, Nadine Nakamura, Assistant Professor of Psychology, Andy Steck, Associate Professor of Education, Veronica Escoffrey Reynolds, Assistant Professor of Education, Matthew Witt, Professor of Public Administration. Uh, when you have conversations about, um, let's start basically with change, but in this case we're talking about um, the diversification of our community. Um, change is challenging. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Sometimes it's invigorating and exciting, but sometimes it's very threatening. And um, what I would say that the key is, is to stay the course. Stay in the conversation, even when it's difficult, even when it's, it's challenging and you feel threatened. Um, 
stay in there politely, stay in there respectfully, but stay in there and continue the dialogue. Um, saying we agree to disagree, well, that's just kind of closing down the dialogue. It's pretend respect, you know, because yeah, it's not yeah. like real respect. Yeah. Real respect is I'm going to stick in here with you and keep talking about these things and let's try to understand each other better. So, that, so that's one. It's going to be hard sometimes. It's going to be difficult. Sometimes we're going to go home feeling beat up and maybe cry. But come back the next day and stay in the conversation. Um, the other thing I would say is that we all have to figure this out for ourselves. And I mean that as individuals first. So as an individual, I think, in terms of diversity and change and all that, you have to say, um, what about me? What do yeah. I think? What's going on in my head? Because you can't engage in those conversations well if you haven't taken the time to reflect. Yes. You know, who am I? What am I about? What are my filters? What are my lenses? How did they get developed? Yeah. That's really, really important. Dear University community, the University of Laverne supports a diverse, respectful, and inclusive environment where students benefit from the life experiences and viewpoints of other students, faculty, staff, and community members. Regardless of any changes that may be made to federal immigration policy, we will continue to provide a positive educational environment for all members of our learning community. The university will continue to uphold existing admissions policies for all students. In this spirit, we will continue our partnerships with the California Student Aid Commission and the Dream.us to offer Dream Scholarships. And we will continue our participation in the California-Mexico Study Center credit-bearing program which guarantees students a return to the U.S. after the program study travel to Mexico, as permitted by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. Our immigration clinic at the College of Law will serve as an information resource for students with questions about deferred action for childhood arrivals and other status issues. We are also assembling a list of local College of Law alumni and other attorneys who can provide information on a pro bono basis for any student with immigration-related questions. Our International Student Services Office is available also to answer questions about international student visas. As a demonstration of this commitment, the University of Laverne has endorsed a letter by college and university presidents to national leaders in support of the DACA program and undocumented immigrant students. We are committed to the mission of the University of Laverne, which supports all our students as each pursues a quality education. Sincerely, Devorah Lieberman.